your risk for entrepreneurial burnout goes down with the more systems that you put in place in your business. You work hard in your business. On the Profit by Design podcast, we ask the big question. What has your business done for you lately? Hi, I'm Dr. Sabrina Starling. I'm the business psychologist, the author of the Four Week Vacation and the How to Hire the Best series, as well as the founder of Tap the Potential, where we coach entrepreneurs like you to design sustainably profitable businesses that give you more time for what matters most and more money in your bank account than ever. Because after all, we believe work supports life, not the other way around. Weekly on the Profit by Design podcast, we bring you tips, tools, and strategies from our own experiences and from the experiences of our guests who are entrepreneurial thought leaders and real life entrepreneurs, all to support you in making intentionally profitable and sustainable business decisions to live the lifestyle you desire. Profit Designers, the four-week vacation, the entrepreneur's ultimate guide to taking your life back from your business is now available. Go to fourweekvacation.com, grab a copy of the book, and be sure to follow the steps there to claim your bonuses. When you purchase the book, you are eligible to join me for my upcoming live training, the four-week vacation, better business, better life jumpstart. Plus, and you'll also get an invitation to an exclusive VIP closed door training with me to identify the true profit potential within your business. Just follow the steps at fourweekvacation.com. And I hope that the four week vacation book inspires you for what's possible. It's time to take your life back from your business. Hey there, Profit Designers. We are nearing the end of 2021. And at Tap the Potential for years, we have had a tradition that I want to share with you here on the podcast. This tradition started back when I was in coach training, probably about 15 or 16 years ago. And it's called a gift to yourself exercise. And my coach, Lisa Kramer, shared it with me. And then I asked her for permission if I could share it with our clients clients that tap the potential. And so every year we sent out this gift to yourself exercise in our newsletter. Well, on the podcast, we have really expanded the gift to yourself exercise and turned it into a four part series that we do every year on the podcast. And we've also created a workbook for you to guide you through your strategic planning. So be sure to download the workbook at tapthepotential.com forward slash plan. And then over the next four weeks, Enjoy creating the mental space and freedom to reflect on what you have accomplished and moved forward and learned in 2021 as you get ready for bringing those learnings and insights into 2022. So over the next four weeks, we will be doing reflection and we will be designing your future. And remember, on the Profit by Design podcast, we are all about work supports life. So everything is geared around you designing that sustainably profitable business that gives you more time for what matters most and more money in your bank account than ever. All good strategic planning starts with taking an inventory. And when it comes to strategically planning to grow your business and the profitability in your business in such a way that your business gives you your life back... It's critical to stop and take an inventory both of the business and of your own mental well-being and emotional well-being. And at Tap the Potential, we have our Better Business, Better Life assessment, which is designed specifically for that purpose. So this assessment allows you to get immediate feedback both on how your business is set up and what systems you can put in place to not only strengthen your business, but also improve your quality of life. You can take our assessment at tapthepotential.com forward slash assessment. Taking that assessment is step number one in your strategic planning process here with us on the podcast. So if you're in a place where you can pause the podcast and go take the assessment right now, it'll take you about 15 to 20 minutes. 
So I recommend that's what you do and so that you don't get too busy and forget. Go to tapthepotential.com forward slash assessment and then come back and listen to the rest of the podcast because I'll be sharing with you some about what your results on your assessment are showing you and how to incorporate it into your strategic planning for the year ahead. Okay, I'm going to assume that you went ahead and took our assessment and be aware that what the assessment is showing you is a snapshot of where you are right now with your quality of life, particularly your risk for entrepreneurial burnout. This is important to check on with yourself on a regular basis because it's so easy to get caught up in our businesses and everything that we have to do and we stop taking care of ourselves and we stop those healthy habits, the veggies first that I talk about in the four week vacation book. We stop doing those things and entrepreneurial burnout can creep up on us. So take a look at what your assessment told you about your risk for entrepreneurial burnout. One of the really interesting findings as we've been studying entrepreneurs over the last two years using this assessment is that your risk for entrepreneurial burnout goes down with the more systems that you put in place in your business. In fact, our results show that entrepreneurs who have a higher quality of life, who have fewer risk factors for burnout, have almost double the number of systems in place compared to those who are at higher risk for burnout and who are experiencing more symptoms of burnout. So the moral of the story is the more systems that you can intentionally put in your place in your business over the next year, the better quality of life you're going to have as an entrepreneur. And if your assessment showed that you are at risk for entrepreneurial burnout, just consider that to be a red flag that's going up. And your next steps really are to think about what self-care practices have you let go of recently. So if you've started losing sleep and staying up later or getting up earlier to get work done, What can you do to adjust your schedule so that you get more sleep again? Or if you have given up exercise or you just got out of the habit of exercising, what can you do to get exercise back into your schedule? In terms of burnout and the accumulated stress that happens, one of the best things we can be doing for ourselves is doing some sort of physical activity at the end of the day to discharge all that pent up energy that we might have from whatever stressors we encountered throughout the day as entrepreneurs. And another area where we entrepreneurs are really vulnerable is disconnecting in our important relationships when the business starts to take over our lives. So look around you and think about Which friendships are you neglecting? Who do you need to reconnect with in your life? What fun do you need to have to just connect with that sense of life and vitality that's in you? And that sense of life and vitality starts to slip away when we get into burnout. So any small actions that you can take to start taking your life back again from your business will help you have a higher quality of life. Today, I want to talk with you about resiliency because this last year and the year prior have been challenging years for so many of us as we've dealt with COVID in our businesses and family members who've been ill, just different ways that we've all been impacted, not being able to travel as much as we would like, missing out on important events. And all of that takes a toll. And so as we all try to come back into life again after COVID and the shutdown, it's an opportunity for us to reflect on how have we been resilient through these difficult times. Resiliency as an entrepreneur is It's vital for us to recognize all the ways that we bounce back. And oftentimes we do not stop and slow down and pay attention to the ways in which we've been resilient. We just keep on plowing through, but we become more resilient when we stop and reflect on what we've learned. And I want you to start by just acknowledging for yourself the specific challenges that you've experienced in the last 24 months. So obviously, top of mind for all of us is COVID, but there's likely been other challenges that you've experienced in your personal life and in your business that may or may not have been related to COVID. So just think about it. Acknowledge what are the big stressors you have dealt with in the last year or two. 
And keep in mind that there are positive stressors that you may have dealt with. So like the birth of a child is one of those positive stressors moving across the country. That's one that I did recently. Getting married, all of those are positive life events, but they have a stress impact in our lives. So we need to acknowledge those as well as the ones that are more negative for us. So I want to share with you the list of the top 10 normative stress life events just to prompt your thinking about what you've been through this past year that may have created stress for you and been a challenge that you've experienced. So the biggest stressor that we can experience in our life is the loss of a spouse, followed by divorce, separation, going to prison, hopefully that didn't happen to you, losing close family members, a significant injury, getting married, job loss, reconciliation in marriage, and retirement. So that's the list of the top 10 most stressful life events that can happen to us in descending order. Number one is the loss of a spouse. So if you've experienced any of those stressors in your personal life in the past year, it's really important to acknowledge that for yourself. And then I want to invite you to think through what support you've received around the different stressors you've experienced in your life. And another point that I want you to consider that What's not listed on this top 10 list of most stressful life events? Like, for example, nowhere in there is cash flow in your business. But for many business owners, I hear all the time that you're staying awake at night worrying about cash flow. And there's other things that go on in our businesses that can create stress for us. So, for example, it, difficulties with a team member or turnover on the team, those are all stressful experiences. Maybe you have a business partnership that deteriorated in the course of a year. Any other relational issues? Relational issues are a big source of stress. So just because something you've experienced in your personal life or in your business is not listed in this top 10 list, don't downplay the significance of it. It's really important just to acknowledge these are the things that happened in my life and these were stressful. In your strategic planning workbook that you can download at tapthepotential.com forward slash plan, there is a place for you to reflect on the challenges you've experienced. And I also have additional questions there for you to respond to. So think about how you've been impacted both personally and in the business and what fears came up for you as you dealt with these challenges. We all have fears that come up when we're under stress, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we operate out of fear. Hopefully we don't. Hopefully we can move into problem solving and look at what our strengths are and figure out some ways to deal with the challenges. But at the same time, it's important to slow down and acknowledge when a stressor brings up fear because we want to make decisions not out of a place of fear or scarcity, but out of a mindset of abundance and opportunity. So oftentimes it's just a matter of we need to acknowledge when we are in a fear-based state of mind. And stress will do that to us. Stress creates that fight or flight reaction. So we have to do intentional work on ourselves to shift our thinking and go over to, well, what is the opportunity being created here? How can I use my strengths to get through this situation? And oftentimes, if you can just name the specific fear, it takes away the power of that fear. And another question that's so powerful is to consider in what ways have you allowed others to support you? Our natural tendency as entrepreneurs is to try to fix everything on our own. We feel like we have to be the superhero in these situations and we try to take care of everyone else around us. But at the same time, the most successful people are those who can lean on others for support. So think through what ways you've allowed others to support you during the last year and think about what opportunities do you have to ask for help or allow others to support you. I'm reminded of Rodrigo Ladaga's interview recently here on the Profit by Design podcast with me, where we talked about this very issue, how our pride keeps us from reaching out to others for help. And yet others derive great satisfaction from being able to support and connect and encourage us. And next, I want to invite you to think through in the last 12 months, what life lessons have you taken from these experiences that you will be able to spring forward from and carry with you to build on your resilience. Resilience is not about bouncing back. It's about bouncing forward and creating greater capacity within ourselves because of the experiences that we've had. 
So resilience is a very active process. It really requires us to be fully present with ourselves and to actively engage in the challenges that we're experiencing. Resilience is like a muscle. It's something that we can build just like when we go to the gym and we work out, we can be focused and intentional around strengthening our resilience and building our resilience muscle. So resilience is all about our willingness to endure challenges and allow ourselves to be fundamentally and forever changed. And that takes a lot of courage to acknowledge that we are changing and evolving because of what we've endured. Since this is the end of the year, I think it's a really good time to pause and acknowledge the ways that we are better and stronger because of the challenges that we've been through in the previous year. And I want to share with you the five practices of highly resilient people. These are identified by Dr. Taryn Stayschool, who is the head of global leadership and development at Cigna. She studied the five practices of highly resilient people. The number one practice is the practice of vulnerability. And this is letting go of the shame bias that we have around vulnerability. And here's what I mean by the shame bias. We have experiences that have shaped us, that we have endured, and we've come out of and we've learned things from these experiences. And at the same time, we may hesitate to share these experiences with others because we feel like, well, if I share this, they're going to judge me or they're going to somehow see me as less than. And one of the immediate examples that I think of is... I think many of you know at Tap the Potential, we struggled, especially during 2020 because of the impact of COVID and had some significant financial challenges that we've come through and are recovering from. I wrote about these in great detail in the four-week vacation book, and I shared them because I know that there are so many other business owners out there going through financial challenges because of COVID and they're struggling and they're feeling shame about it. And so I felt like if I don't share what I've been through and what I've learned from this experience, then I am turning my back in in some ways on others. But at the same time, I was very hesitant to share because it felt very vulnerable. I felt like I would be judged because at Tap the Potential, We support our clients in building profitable businesses and recovering from financial setbacks in their businesses. And here we are with our own financial challenges. I thought, well, some people may judge me. And really, some people have judged me that I'm aware of. I'm okay with that because I came out of the experience having learned a lot that will make us better in how we serve our clients and what we teach our clients, especially with respect to utilizing profit first to recover from financial challenges. So the shame bias is that hesitation to share where we're vulnerable because of how we may be judged by others. And and I won't lie, I woke up one morning after the four-week vacation was out and I had been interviewed on a podcast about that particular experience that I shared in the four-week vacation. And I had that, what Brene Brown calls a vulnerability hangover, where I thought, oh my gosh, did I overshare? Did I say too much? And You know, my rule of thumb about sharing something is that we need to be resolved emotionally with it. And at the point in time when I wrote about it in the book, I felt like I had really worked through the issues. We had a clear plan in place for how we were recovering. We're working the plan. And so I felt like, no, the timing was right to share that. So think about for yourself where you may be feeling vulnerable and you may have some shame bias that's keeping you from sharing your vulnerability. When we don't share our vulnerability, we close ourselves off from the opportunity for others to offer support. And we also shut down our own learning. Every time I've shared my story about the challenges we've been through at Tap the Potential due to COVID, I've received supportive feedback. I've received good ideas and people have shared their experiences and that has furthered my own learning. The second practice of highly resilient people is productive perseverance. That means knowing when to stay the course and not being afraid to shift gears. 
This is so important and such a big thing in our Better Business, Better Life program because I hear our clients grappling with this and bringing issues forward on a regular basis, asking questions of, you know, I started this initiative in my business or I started in this direction and I've encountered some challenges. Things aren't turning out the way that I thought they would. So is this something that I should stop doing or should I stay the course? And Having that sounding board of trusted individuals who can help you think through these decisions and decide, no, this is a time when I need to shift gears, or, you know, maybe I'm really close to a breakthrough and I need to stick with it. And I will tell you, there's so many times where I see business owners looking for the quick win and being frustrated when it doesn't come. A lot of the strategic initiatives that get put in place in business take six months, 12 months, 18 months sometimes to really come to fruition. And it's almost that experience of you know, stopping short just a few inches from the gold. Or if you think about it, if you like football, you can think about it in terms of being on the 10 yard line and it's the third down and you're so close to that touchdown, but you're not quite there and you just give up and say, I can't do it. And that's so many things in business are like that, where we are so close to turning the corner or the things that we're putting in place, it's not going to be one thing that causes a massive positive change, but it's going to be the culmination of multiple little things that are moving strategically in the right direction that bring about that big change. And so if we get frustrated and discouraged and we stop our initiatives too soon, we never realize the full fruits of our labor. And so That's where I think it's so valuable to have trusted individuals, peers, and coaches who can help support you in deciding, okay, you know, this is something that I've tried. It's not working. I need to shift gears versus, hey, you know what? I really need to stick with this and see it through maybe just a few more months and then figuring out a plan for how to stick with it. And one of the things, just along these lines, one of the questions that I would encourage you to think about is whenever you're starting a new initiative, ask yourself at the beginning, what are the early signs of success? What are the markers that I will see in my business that will let me know that I'm on the right track and I should stick with this initiative? When we take the time to define those in the beginning and we start to see them happen in our business, then it helps us make a decision about whether or not we should keep moving forward with something. And also, if you're in that place right now where you've started an initiative and you're not seeing the results that you expected, ask yourself, what signs of success am I seeing? Are there early signs of success that I'm seeing? And how might I leverage those or do more with those? The third practice of highly resilient people is the practice of connection. And this is, I'm reminded so much of the podcast that I did recently with Rodrigo Ladaga, where we talked about the importance of connecting with others and allowing others the opportunity to support us. And again, as business owners, allowing ourselves to be vulnerable and ask for help. When we close ourselves off and we put on that facade that everything is okay, what we're really doing is we're shutting ourselves off from connecting with people. So I invite you to look at where is it safe for you to let down your guard? Where is it safe for you to acknowledge the struggles that you're having? And where could you allow others to connect with you and support you? One of the pieces of feedback that I regularly hear about our Better Business, Better Life program and any of the group experiences or course experiences that we create at Tap the Potential, I hear the feedback so often that business owners appreciate that it's a safe place to be real about the challenges that they're experiencing in business and receive support from others. And I think as business owners, we don't have many of those places in our lives. So look around yourself and see where is it safe for you to ask for support and let down your guard and give yourself that opportunity to connect with others. The fourth practice of highly resilient people is what Dr. Siskel calls the practice of gratiosity. I love this word. It's the combination of practicing gratitude and generosity. This is where we recognize there are gifts in adversity, and it's where we acknowledge the gifts that we've received with gratitude that have come out of the challenges that we've faced. So an example of this is with covid 
I've learned how to really appreciate not only my good health, but the good health of my family, team members, and those around me that I care about. And I've also come to appreciate the simple things like going out to eat in a restaurant. Not having done that for over a year, I remember the first time I went back into a restaurant and enjoyed a meal. And we went up to the bar to get a drink and the bartender was wearing a mask. He made eye contact with me and he had this, I could see the smile in his eyes and he just said, it's so good to see you and have you here. And I felt in that moment, like that sense of, it's just wonderful to connect with people and outside of my immediate family and just be in person with other human beings. So those are things that I completely took for granted and never really paid attention to prior to COVID. But it's something now that I'm very aware of, and that comes out of a challenge that we've experienced. So practice gratiosity. Finally, the fifth practice of highly resilient people is the practice of possibility. And this means facing adversity and coming forward with less fear. This means that we look at the question of what's possible versus focusing on the challenge and the adversity that we're dealing with. So you face challenges in the previous year. Think about what possibilities opened up for you because of those challenges and what possibilities are coming out of any challenges you're currently experiencing. Instead of asking yourself these judger questions of why me, why do I have to deal with this? This is so awful. And really getting in that judger pit, you can switch those questions to a question of, well, what's possible here? What do I want? What do the other individuals involved want or need? And how do we create a win-win solution and looking at as we go forward, in what ways might we move forward from here? And I'm reminded of in the book by Ryan Holiday, The Obstacle is the Way, he talks about the post-mortem planning. And I also talk about doing post-mortems in the four-week vacation book. In The Obstacle is the Way, when he talks about post-mortems, he's saying that one opportunity we have is to look at the things that are important to us, the projects that we're trying to accomplish and move forward, and just think through what could go wrong and throw us off track. Because let's face it, all of our great plans get thrown off track. When a human being is involved, because humans aren't perfect, things aren't going to go the way we planned. And so if we take the time and we think through, well, what could go wrong and what would I do if that happened, then we already have our backup plan in place and we're much better equipped to deal with the challenge when it happens. We're much less likely to go into that judger pit. And I think about that really focuses us on that question of what's possible now, given that I'm in this situation, didn't go as planned, what's possible now? So I really want to invite you in at this point to reflect on what you've accomplished in the last 12 months. One of the habits of highly successful people or one of the tendencies of highly successful people is that we are paying a lot of attention to what we want to create and what we want to have happen. And we notice the gap that, you know, here we are, our situation is this, and we really want it to be something better. And so we're highly aware of the gap and we don't pay enough attention to our wins and accomplishments and looking at what have we moved forward? How is your business better now today than it was 12 months ago. And I bet when you stop and reflect on that, you will see a lot of ways that it's improved and your life as well. And what ways is your life better now than it was 12 months ago? And it's oftentimes in these moments that we realize, wow, we've come a long way. And those things that we're doing with intent and with a specific direction towards our vision, we've taken a lot of small steps forward in that positive direction. And it really can have a big impact over 12 months time. So the questions that I've compiled for you in the strategic planning workbook are designed to get you reflecting on your wins and successes because we really want to build on that as you go into the coming year. So again, these questions are all in your workbook. If you haven't downloaded your workbook yet, go to tapthepotential.com forward slash plan. 
So these questions are listed for you in the workbook, and I'm only going to hit a few of them here on the podcast, but I really encourage you to download the workbook and go through the questions, respond to the ones that really resonate for you. So what are the challenges you experienced? How were you impacted? What fears came up for you? In what ways have you allowed others to support you? What life lessons have you taken from these experiences? What possibilities have evolved because of the challenges you experienced? With respect to your leadership, what personal development have you undertaken in the past year? What coaching did you do? And how did you grow as a leader in this past year? What could you stop doing? And in what ways would that make your life easier? In what ways did you improve your service delivery, particularly with respect to your top clients? What development have you done with your team in the last 12 months? In what ways have you strengthened systems in your business in the last 12 months? And what's working well that if improved or further systemized in your business might develop into a significant strength for your business? I have a perfect example that comes to mind here for us at Tap the Potential. We've had a lot of struggles with our website over the last couple of years, and we've put significant attention on it in the second and third quarter of 2021. And I've actually been receiving several compliments on the website. And the first one that I received really struck me because I thought, wow, the website used to be such a source of frustration. And we put a lot of attention there to improving it. And it functions really well now. Not always perfectly, but it functions much better. And people are actually complimenting us on it. That is such a significant improvement. So what are the things like this in your own business that maybe are a source of frustration currently, but if you were to strengthen them, could become a real strength in your business, as well as what's working well enough that if you were to further systematize it, could become a real strength in your business. Another question to consider is what might be simplified in your business? So there are more questions in the workbook, but I just want to get your mind going here. Go download that workbook, set aside some time for reflection, and really give yourself that quality thinking time here at the end of the year as we go through this strategic planning series here on the podcast. This is episode one of four in the series, so stay tuned as we come back next week. I'll be taking you through the gift to yourself exercise. This is one of my favorite end of year rituals. I've been doing it myself since 2005. So this will be year 16 of going through the ritual of the gift to yourself exercise. It's very powerful and I'm eager to share it with you. And as we close today, I want to invite you, if you are committed to making 2022 a much better year for yourself in your business and in your life, consider joining our Better Business, Better Life program at Tap the Potential. You can see all the details at tapthepotential.com and you can book a call there with us and we'll explore whether or not the program is a good fit for you. Thank you for spending time with us today. Join our conversation in the Entrepreneurs Take Your Life Back Facebook community at tapthepotential.com forward slash group. Share your aha moments from today's episode, ask me questions, and join in on the fun with your fellow entrepreneurs on the journey to designing sustainably profitable businesses that give you more time for what matters most and more money in your bank account than ever. And finally, share today's episode with a friend if you know a friend who would enjoy it. This is real life business. Keep your chin up. Keep moving forward. You got this. If you're loving the Profit by Design podcast and have gotten any value out of it for your business or your life, would you mind doing two things? Subscribe to the show so you never miss an episode. And please leave us a review. Our listener reviews help us get into the top 10 of all entrepreneurship podcasts so that more entrepreneurs like you discover us. Your review is critical in helping us make a difference for more entrepreneurs who are ready to take their life back.